With soaring oil prices and debates raging on how to reduce carbon emissions in order to slow climate change, biofuels have been promoted as a clean and renewable alternative for the contaminant oil industry, even by environmentalists. In 2005, the Peruvian government approved regulations that established an obligatory blend of 2% of biodiesel with diesel by 2009 and 5% by 2011. Additionally, it was also established an obligatory blend of 7.8% of ethanol with gasoline by 2010. With this schedule, many private investors have turned their eyes on the biofuels business in Peru and many public institutions have been involved in its promotion. However, the initial enthusiasm is losing strength as several organisations, governments and specialists have focused on the potential negative effects of biofuels. A World Bank report showed that 75% of increase in food prices has been caused by the biofuels industry. Also, the environmental effects of biofuels have been strongly questioned. In Brazil, Malaysia and Indonesia, biofuels have caused a deforestation of large, pristine areas. For Peru, the biofuels business is just starting and there is a lot of uncertainty about the impacts this industry might have in the country. On July 4th, 2008, Advancing Conservation in a Social Context organised a round table with experts and public officers to discuss the opportunities, challenges and perspectives of biofuels, as well as decisions taken on this issue. In Peru, disinformation in the public debate about biofuels is leading to polarisation between those who are in favour or against it, without serious research and dialogue to support decisions and positions. What is happening in the world is that the discussion has become generalized. It was said before that biofuels were good, ecological, but now, based on conclusions of case studies from the United States, Mexico and Indonesia, everyone is focusing on the negative issues. Whether we're talking about oil palm or yatrofa in the Amazon, or corn in the northern coast, these are completely different discussions and require different policies directed to every one of those subsectors. Biofuels are not a sector. For me, they are several sectors. Two biofuels are going to be commercialized in the Peruvian market, ethanol and biodiesel. Ethanol, which mixes with gasoline, is obtained from sugarcane plantations, mainly in the northern coast though these plantations are starting to be developed in the Amazon rainforest. To obtain biodiesel, which mixes with diesel too, the possible plantations in Peru are palm oil in the Amazon, canola in the highlands and hatrofa in the Amazon and the coast. The characteristics and possible impacts of these plantations vary a lot due to different species of plants and their location. Actually, everyone says that we need more time and that we are not ready. But in order to have a 7.8% ethanol mixture, Peru needs about 24,000 acres. The rest is for exportation. According to the Ministry of Agriculture, to satisfy the obligatory mix of 2% of biodiesel in diesel for 2009, about 197,000 acres will be needed, but Peru has less than 49,000 acres. That is what's going to happen if we maintain the 2% norm. Since we have an oil deficit in the country, we will have to produce biodiesel with imported raw materials. We wouldn't want to import. Producers are telling us that for January they will have biodiesel and they expect that ethanol will also be ready at its time. As the debate focuses on the capacity of Peru to comply with the obligatory mixtures, a critical question remains. Biofuels have a cleaner combustion than gasoline and diesel too, which means that their use could reduce the carbon emissions from the old and neglected Peruvian automotive fleet. However, mixes of 2% and 7.8% won't mean a big difference. But the impact of greenhouse gas emissions should not be measured only by combustion, but also from all what is implied in the production of biofuels. Again, 
the impact varies according to the crops. Sugarcane crops from ethanol demand huge amounts of water, a scarce resource in the northern coast of Peru. And for the production of biodiesel, there is a lot of fear about the possible deforestation of the Amazon as a result of oil palm monocultures. Poverty in Peru is concentrated mainly in rural areas, mostly dedicated to agriculture. Monocultures for biofuels could be an important source of labour for rural areas. However, the experience of oil palm plantations in Malaysia shows that there are other impacts. In Peru, palm oil companies in the Amazon rainforest have faced problems with local settlers. The cause for the conflicts have been land ownership and the differences in lifestyles and world visions between powerful companies and poor indigenous communities. We want to defend our land. Here, 90% of us are dedicated to agriculture. The fact of being a peasant does not mean that we have to be condemned to letting a company come and very easily divest our possessions. To this company, we have asked and said several times, we don't want them in our town. Large-scale monocultures could be positive for the creation of jobs and therefore for rural development. However, social and environmental considerations should be taken into account in order to achieve these goals and to avoid deforestation and social conflicts.